based on the environment. We now know this is now a new field of science. The new field of science is called epigenetics. The old field of science that I was teaching was called genetic control, meaning control by genes. Epi is a prefix like epidermis. Epi means above. So the new science, epigenetic control, literally says control above the genes. And all of a sudden I started to realize this whole world that I was conventionally teaching in was completely misunderstood. That the cell is a programmable chip. A cell can become anything based on the environment that it is in. And all of a sudden I started to recognize in nature that we are not fixed beings and determined by our genetics. That we can change our genetic expression. It is now recognized, a very interesting fact, every gene in your body can be modified by the environment to create over 30,000 different variations from the same gene blueprint. Meaning, you are not fixed in any sense of the term. You can change your genetics anytime. But what was the change coming from? It was coming from information from the environment that was then decoded by the cell membrane and then sent to the nucleus to change the genetics. Then I realized that my life wasn't controlled from within. My life was controlled from the outside. Then I started to recognize that the function of my brain is the equivalent of the cell skin to read the environment and then adjust your biology to match the environment. The biggest part of my whole life changed, came that one night in 1985, at the moment I wrote that definition. Because at the moment I wrote that definition and re realized what it meant, I also realized this, that I am not inside this body, and you are not inside your body. Because on the surfaces of all of our cells, there are different receptors, like eyes, ears, nose, tastes like our own skin. But here's what's important. Each human being has their own set of receptors that distinguishes them from every other human being. Each one of us has a set of antennas on our own cells that respond to an environmental signal that makes us different from other people. And if you take these receptors and cut them off the surface of the cell, the cell goes comatose. It has no behavior. And until the receptors are returned, the cell will do nothing. But once the receptors come back, the cell has a life again. The relevance? I recognize that my identity is not contained within my cells. My identity is something out of the field that my receptors translate my identity into my existence. It was so exciting that at that time, I had read about the new science of life from Rupert Sheldrake. And it was funny because years and years ago, I wrote Rupert and said, this is an amazing mechanism because it takes your morphic fields as information and translates it into biology. And the relevance is that it's a two-way street. Information comes in through these receptors and information is sent back into the field. And all of a sudden, at that very instant in time, that instant for me that was about a millisecond, I realized I'm not in here. I'm out here. And the significance of that was my life changed in that one second, not spiritual, all the way up to those 40 years. And in one second, I realized the requirement of spirituality because my identity was outside. So if my body died, my identity never was altered because it was always outside in the first place. And it changed my entire life because I started to recognize spirituality as a functional element of our biology. And all of this started to put together, and I started to recognize a new meaning of biology and life. Rather than teaching, which has been changed right now at the front edge of science, but the public has no awareness of this, because the public still has the awareness they are victims of their genetics. And the new science says you're not a victim of your genetics, you're a master of your genes. You can change your genetic expression by the way you perceive your life. If you change your perception, you change your biology. And all of a sudden, if you can understand the notion of this, you are free to create anything you want out of your life on this planet. The only problem that I then found out was my conscious mind, the one that has my desires and my wishes and what I want for my life, only works about 
percent of my life. Ninety-five percent of my life is from my subconscious mind. The problem? The subconscious mind is programmed by other people primarily. So the beliefs in your subconscious mind are not your beliefs. They are downloaded from your teachers, your experiences of life. So all of a sudden I start recognizing why people have trouble creating what they want from their lives. It's because you create from your conscious mind, but biology reveals that it is our subconscious mind that controls our lives. And now I've recognized also that if you change and rewrite the beliefs of your subconscious mind, you rewrite your life. You are not a victim. Again, you are a master of this world that we live in. And the relevance is that we all of a sudden enter into a new realm of biology, leaving behind the mechanistic genetic component of life and opening up to the reality of a spiritual existence and an experiential existence that shapes who we are. That we are far more powerful than any of us have ever imagined us to be. And that soon, when this information gets to the public, when the public realizes that they're only victims of their beliefs, and that they can change those beliefs, then the world will change. And I'm very, very, very optimistic, extremely optimistic about the future. For this reason, we are changing our world, it's very obvious to everyone right now. We're in a state of an evolutionary upheaval. And it's interesting because this evolution has played out before. And it's a fractal image because nature is fractal in its geometry. And fractals are important because the math of fractals is the math that proves as above, so below. Because math fractals reveal that nature is built on repetitive patterns over and over again. And the answer is, how will we survive? And the beautiful part about that is we've been told through our history, the answers lie within. It is true. Because inside your body, you are 50 trillion cells. Every cell is a living entity. Every cell has virtu virtually every cell in your body has every function that you have. Every cell has a digestive, a respiratory, and an excretory system, a nervous system. Every cell has an immune system. Every cell is a miniature human being. And why is it relevant? Because if you can understand how 50 trillion cells can live in harmony under a skin and share their experiences where every cell has a job, where every cell gets health care, where every cell gets protection, where the garbage is taken out for all, then you start to realize the model for a human civilization that is sustainable and will allow us to evolve into the future already exists under our skin. And all we have to do is now study deep within ourselves and go inside to get the answers for the outside. Thank you.